Greetings, welcome to Jeffical Films. Today we're going to cover a 1976 classic starring Michael York, Basil from Austin Powers, Jenny Agutter, and Farrah Fawcett. So let's review Logan's Run. Run, runner! Jesus! Get away from me! It's too late for renewal, Mark. You're 30. Your life is over. You know it and I know it. Run, but please, for Christ's sake. We're the only ones who even remember Logan's run. There is no sanctuary. This movie starts out with some text setting everything up. World's fucked, and if you want to live in this pleasurable society, well, there's one catch. You're going to die at 30. And the measure your life clock? They have these crystals in the palm of your hand. They change color the older you get. We meet Logan and Francis who are at Carousel. They're taking in the show, you know, everybody that turns 30 goes there to get renewed and they float up in their little bobsled outfits and uh, they get shot by lasers and uh, nobody really gets renewed. They're just getting murdered here. And some people decide that they're going to run. Those are the runners. And that's what Logan and Francis go off to deal with because they're Sandmen. They police runners. When they actually chase the runner, they're not even taking their job seriously. They're just toying with the guy. Logan misses like a hundred times and eventually the guy falls off a balcony and dies. And you've got some maintenance guy that just like flies over him with this like little hover outfit and it just disintegrates the body. Logan's back chilling at a 70s pad looking for some free love in his transporter Tinder. And man, did he push the button right because that is a nice outfit. Hello. Welcome. Her name's Jessica and she's pretty curious just like Logan, but Logan's a lot more straightforward with what he wants to do tonight and she's kind of uncertain and doesn't really want to. So why'd she put herself in the circuit? I don't know. Frances shows up with a couple of ladies and she decides to book it. And I guess you just can't have sex all night with multiple girls and then not have to go into work the next day. So Francis takes all the items he got from runners and he hands it into the computer. Logan does the same, but the computer makes him sit and starts asking him questions. This uh, little symbol here shows up, which means sanctuary. No question. Uh, what if I need help from another Sandman? Negative. You will begin assignment by becoming a runner seeking sanctuary. There's over 1,056 runners unaccounted for. No one's ever been renewed. And this is all eye-opening information for Logan as he has to put his crystal into this machine and she turns it black on him. He was 26, he had four more years. He's a little upset about that. He leaves and he goes talks to Francis who's you know, enjoying the spa. He asks him if he's ever seen anyone be renewed. Did I what? See anybody renewed? Of course. Anybody we know? Look, get a bit of water. You need it more than I do. Francis, I have to talk to you. Freaking out, he calls Jessica back to his room because she was wearing the same symbol and wants her help because it's different now that it's him. Jessica definitely knows something and seems like she might help him, but when she talks to her friends, they want her to bring him to level one so that they can deal with him. The outdoor models make the world look a lot bigger. They do a good job with that. And even the trains is, you know, I know it's a miniature, but it still looks decent. Jessica takes him to Cathedral Plaza, which is an area that's full of a lot of violent people. And he actually tracks down a runner who's trying to run from him. He's like, no, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm a runner too. But he gets surrounded heavily by children. But the playtime's over. All right, children, playtime's over. Also, Francis kind of follows him there and shoots the runner. When they get out of there, Logan decides he's going to get a new face so that he can hide his identity. And so when he sees Farrah Fawcett, he asks her the question that I think we would have all asked her back then. Will you get on the table, please? Do you want me to take my clothes off? The doctor's explaining the process and how the lasers can do this all painlessly, but then he gets a call from his friends to kill him. So then the lasers go all nuts because he's trying to kill him. Logan manages to switch places with the doctor and the doctor dies. Francis shows up and says, I saw you let a runner go, and he gets knocked out by Logan. And then Logan and Jessica go running, and they run through these back wall corridors into this giant orgy. I don't know if you've ever ran into an orgy, but it's hard to get to where you're going because people just pick you up and try to throw you on those soft pillows beds. They find a secret passageway that leads down a giant set of stairs and Logan uses his communication device to signal a Sandman. He's kind of playing both sides here and he runs into the committee of runners and they're deciding whether they're going to kill him or let him go through. 
He has to convince them, and Jessica's on his side now. But then all the Sandmen show up and start killing everyone. They're about to kill Jessica until he makes a decision. <laughs> Francis shows up and tries to convince Hogan to kill the girl, but they run and they go through this really cool industrial place with you know lots of water and this old lost forgotten place. Giant fish too. They do a lot of exploring, but they should probably hurry because Francis isn't too far behind. I'm not sure how safe it was to be in that water for those actors as just pushing them through the tunnel. Also, they must get really cold when they're going up on the lift because they turn into dolls. When the lift gets to the top, it's very cold and they walk through some ice caves, find some blankets and decide to get out of their wet clothes and put the blankets over to warm up. Then a robot shows up. He's pretty crazy. Who are you? I'm more than machine. Oh man. More than a fusion of the two. Don't you agree? The robot wants them to follow and they decide to put their clothes back on. Um, guys, they're still wet. He shows them where he's taking the others to Sanctuary and they're all just frozen there. They're a giant food source of people and the robot tries to freeze them too. Logan manages to shoot the robot and everything goes crazy and starts falling apart. <laughs> To escape and find outside sunlight something they've never seen before and this is where the cool location scouting happened francis also makes it through as well and jessica gets touched by a lizard and freaks out i hate outside i hate it jessica, I hate jessica. It. it's all right it's, come on it's all right she's exhausted now frustrated and it's getting dark they rest in the trees, but we can tell she's growing fond of him. Jessica thinks they're the first people to get through, and they find this lake and they dive in and do some nude swimming. But for a movie that's not afraid to show you an orgy that they had to run through, why the implied sex? It's a long journey for these two, and hopelessness does set in a few times. They finally find some ruins, and everything's just covered in grass and vegetation. They explore a bit, they see a graveyard, they see a giant thing of George Washington, but they don't know who he is. They go inside, and it must be George Washington's library, and they see a lot of cats. And then there's an old man who's eating nuts, and he loves these cats. This is kind of where it gets a bit slow. Is, is that what they're called? Cats? Yeah, and they've each got their own name. Catch, of course, what else would they be called? <laughs> Catch! They ask the old man a lot of questions and he's explaining his life and a lot of the dialogue seems like filler. Jessica still thinks there's a sanctuary so she wants to rest and then go looking for it in the morning. Logan doesn't and it's psychologically hard for them. Francis shows up and kidnaps Jessica and takes her upstairs and Logan has to fight his best friend and kill him. It's kind of sad and tragic because he never really got a chance to explain to Francis what was going on that he had to like run because he was forced to discover all this crap but that the life clocks are unnecessary. Logan, you are an old. <sighs> and he's gonna go back and he's gonna stop it. Jessica just wants to stay alive and be with him. Also, they're gonna take the old guy with them. We get to see some of the structures from outside and it looks pretty cool before they dive in, go and swim under. It kind of feels like two movies sometimes. Logan and Jessica find people heading off to Carousel, and we get the best shouting ever. No! Don't go in there! You don't have to die! Well, no one has to die at 30! You can live! Live! But no one believes them. I mean, look at this crystal, it's clear. The Sandman grab him and take him to the computer. The computer interrogates him rather harshly, but it doesn't like his answers. the computer can't handle the truth and it just explodes and then everything starts to explode so everybody decides to go outside and they see the old man and start playing with his beard and they realize they were telling the truth and everyone lived happily ever after you know without any of the technology and stuff 
The movie had a budget of $7 million and it made $25. Without a lot of marketing back then, that actually means it did pretty well. But it also became a cult classic and it actually spawned a television series and was based off of a novel. The movie explores utopian and dystopian themes with the idea characters are willing to die instead of reaching advanced ages. There's prominent concepts in the film, the dangers of hedonism, youth worship, and particularly the dangers of a government-sponsored euthanasia. So not only is it a fun sci-fi flick, but they're actually sending out messages there to try to be deep and philosophical, which is probably why it stand the test of time and became a cult classic. If you watch it now, it seems a little cheesy, but the star Michael York has been trying to get a reboot done for decades. What happened to you? I lost a runner in Cathedral. Parker? Ran into some cubs I couldn't manage. One of them cut me bad all the way down. Cubs? I'm on my way to New You for repairs. Get yourself a new face while you're at it. They know you now. <laughs> In many ways, this movie was before its time. Like when Logan asked Jessica if she was a lesbian because she wasn't into him. I mean, that's a logical response, right? I mean, look at him. But like, it wasn't taboo and the way he delivered the line, it was a very casual thing because they were pushing agendas here without actually having to. And they're just trying to set up a whole dystopian thing like Star Trek usually does, which is like, this is the norm and it's about time the society gets to it. Let's straight up. This is definitely one of those classics that you can go back and watch again and enjoy. And who doesn't enjoy somebody shouting, you better run, runner? Well, as always, thanks for watching.